next assignment in computer animation and what we're going to be working on is creating an image or a scene where we have a car and the name of car and we're creating a glare or a uh, lens kind of flare shine effect that uh, kind of highlights the word and the, uh, the glare of the windows in a car image uh, using masking and using some motion tweens. So uh, what we're going to do is go ahead and start a new document. Um, I already have this gradient in here. I'll delete it so we start fresh. Um, first thing you're going to want to do is choose an image of a car to work on. So uh, if I go over to Google Chrome, uh, I was looking at some Porsches and I had an image here that I had liked. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this image, go back to Flash, and paste this image in. Um, and I'm going to have to do some resizing. So I'll press Q or uh, select your free transform tool, and then hold Shift and reduce the size um, so that the image will fit inside of your stage. Um, and we want to leave a little space at the top so we can put in the title of the car. Um, I think it's nice to have the car be on a uh, black background um, so that way we can kind of make the shine really stand out a little bit more on the text um, so we'll go ahead and we'll label this layer uh, car we'll add another layer above it and we will call this uh, title or the name of the car um, so what we'll do is take our type tool and we'll make a type box that's a little bit off the top but um, and we will write this as Porsche. Um, and sometimes when your text box is not big enough, you may have to adjust the size um, in order to get your text to kind of fit. So a little nudging there brings that over to the right size. And the, uh, the font type that I have picked is Impact. Um, you can really choose any font for this, but I think it works best when you have a font that's very bold or wide. Um, that way you can really see the effect. And actually, um, we do want to make sure that we choose a particular uh, font color. Um, in this instance, it is this dark gray color. So if we go to our fills, it's actually, um, if we start at the top, it's the second gray tone down from black. So it's this one. Um, ironically, strangely reads 66666 all the way across. So if you want to enter it in that way, you can enter your color number in that way too. Um, okay, so uh, now that we have that color picked, um, what we want to start doing is um, creating our shines. So I'm going to uh, go ahead and add in another new layer. And this layer is going to be in between these two. Um, and so what I'm going to do is create a gradient. All right, and so my gradient, I'm going to start it kind of off the side here. And I want it to be about the length of my word. So it should go kind of cover in front of it. At least it's actually behind it. Um, but that's kind of key to making it blend in. Um, so we want it to be the same color as the type that we have picked. Okay. So it should be that same gray tone, two grays down right here. Um, but what we're going to do is turn this into a linear gradient. Okay, um, now mine's already been adjusted to be the type of gradient I want it to be. I'm going to go ahead and uh, take that away so that m mine looks more like what yours will probably look like. So um, when you start out, you're more than likely going to have a white to black gradient here, sort of like this. Um, what we want to do with that gradient is make a little adjustment to it. So we're going to move the white into the middle. Um, we're going to add another spot here by just clicking right below this um, bar. And we're going to double click here in order to take the gray tone, again, the same gray tone that we've been using for the font before, and double click here. And we're going to also make this that same gray tone. So we have white in the middle and gray on both the edges. Um, then what we're going to do is we're going to slide these sliders in so they're very close to the center, kind of making this uh, glare kind of lens beam that's going to actually go across these letters. Okay, so once I have that set, um, I'm actually going to also kind of manipulate this gradient a little bit. So I'm going to take my gradient transform tool. And what I'm going to do is kind of take the round circle from one of the corners. We're going to turn this so that it has more of a slant to it. Um, and that slant looks pretty good, you know, about almost a 45 degree angle there, maybe just a little bit further. Nice. 
And, um, and so what we're going to do also now is let's go ahead maybe to, let's say, 25 frames or so. Um, click on the top frame and then go down to the bottom. And we'll press F5 so that all these frames in our animation will stay present until, uh, until the 25th frame there. Okay. Um, so what we're going to do is we're actually going to take uh, this gradient and we're going to have to convert it into a graphic because we want to add a motion tween to it. So I'm going to start by calling this shine1 and that will be our first graphic here. Now what we want to do with this graphic is actually um, move it over so that it does not go over our lettering quite yet. Okay, So you want this shine to not interfere with letters yet. Um, but what we do want is for this gradient to actually, this box to actually stretch to cover our entire um, word. So as you can see, this is still poking out. So I'm going to want to move this a little bit further over. And you're going to have to play around with it nudging until you get it quite right for your lettering. So you can see that Porsche is covered by this gray area here. Um, and my gradient starts over to the side and it's covered there. Um, what I can do next is go down to this 25th uh, keyframe and add a new keyframe, actually. 25th frame, add a new keyframe. And what we'd like to do now is take our gradient and I'm nudging with my um, keyboard and moving it so it goes all the way across the lettering to there. So now you can see it's gone all the way across the word Porsche, the gradient's here, and my word is still covered by this gradient bar. Okay. Um, the other thing I'm going to need to do is we're going to turn this title into a mask layer. So I'm going to right click and go down to mask. So now the title, the word, is actually masking the gradient. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is go ahead and add a motion tween in between here. And what we'll see is that gradient moves across our type. So if I go ahead and preview this, that is the effect that we have. So Porsche getting kind of highlighted across. Um, the next steps are going to be, and I'm going to go ahead and save this now, just because that's always a good idea. I'm going to go car shine is what I will call this. All right, and so next thing we're going to do is we're going to add the same kind of a shine going across the windows of this car. And you can do it on things like the, uh, the mirrors or the, um, the headlights, rather, or the rims, too. Um, but I'm going to walk you through trying to do this on just the windows for right now. Um, so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and create um, two new layers. Just like we have here, we've got two layers, one that's a mask and one that's our shine. Okay, so on this layer down below, we'll call this uh, shine. This will actually be our second shine. I'll go ahead up here and actually um, I'm going to call this shine one because that is what is there. And then on this layer, we'll call this windows. Okay, um, so on the windows layer what we'll do is we'll go ahead and take our rectangle tool and choose a color that's really bright or different from your car. I'm going to take this kind of neon green and I'm going to zoom in and like I was saying on this windows first keyframe here um, I'm going to draw some rectangles that are about the size of the car windows and just using my simple uh, my simple arrow tool my selection tool I'm going to kind of hover over on this shape and take and pull these corners into the right space. So I'm kind of taking this corner, going to move that about there, and move all the corners so that they're about in the right place. Then what we can do is if you hover over the edge of a shape, you can kind of manipulate the curves too. Okay, so I'm going to take this curve and kind of push this out, this curve, push that out, and then push out this little curve right here. Okay. Uh, maybe I'll manipulate this one just a tiny bit. Maybe pull it back just a little bit more. Cool. So that fits that shape pretty well. Um, I'm going to go ahead and lock my car layer because I don't really need that to move. I just noticed that I almost selected it there. Um, and I'm going to do the same for my other windows as well. So here I'm going to make uh, a rectangle. I'm actually not going to overlap that rectangle. I'm going to stop kind of like right here. And, uh, and what I will do is I'll go ahead and then take this corner, drag it there. I'll take this corner, drag it down in a little bit, 
this corner, I think, wants to be somewhere around here, actually. And then this corner, I'll kind of lift up and put right about there. I think should work. Okay. So again, I want to manipulate the curves here. So I'm kind of pulling the edges once I have the corners in place. And I kind of want to see if I can get this to bend around the mirror a little bit. Um, and that is okay right there. What then I can do is actually go ahead and add in another shape on top of it. Um, and what Flash will automatically do is kind of combine these shapes into one when they overlap. Um, I'm going to go back to my uh, simple selection tool and I'm going to take this corner then and kind of pull that in. Okay, I'm going to take this corner and pull that out make this a little more rounded and try and get this to fit a little bit more to that window. Okay, so it's not quite perfect, um, but I think that that will do as far as I need for demonstrating. Okay, and like I said, you can do this as well to the headlight areas or maybe even the wheel rim areas and, um, and really kind of get into having everything that's kind of chrome or glass shine. Um, but the next part is now, remember these are on the window layer, so on the shine layer right here that we created before, we're going to do another rectangle gradient, okay? This time we want to make it go the same height of our car. Um, what we'll need to do is make this also into a linear gradient, so I'll go back and select my rectangle and then choose the linear gradient. Um, again, we want it to be a very similar gradient to the one we had before, Although now what we want to have happen is we want to have white in the middle. Sorry, just clicked there by accident. Um, what we want to have to do is actually make these gradients, on, or these colors rather, these color swatches on either side, have these be transparent. So what I want to do is take the alpha on this side and turn it down to 0%. Okay, I'm going to go on the right hand side now, take this alpha and drag it down to 0%. All right, you can click inside this box and type in 0 as well, um, and that will work also. And then this middle should be white, okay? So ideally we have this kind of beam uh, going down here, and this is kind of like just a white fading out to transparent on the edges. Um, and what we'll need to do with this also is we're gonna need to convert it to a graphic. So I'll press F8, we'll call this Shine 2. All right, and then what we'll do is we will take this, and actually what I'm going to do is turn this on a slight angle as well. Slight angle there. Maybe move it up just a bit. And, uh, and what I'd like to do is also take this, go down to the 25th keyframe or so, and I'm going to press F6 here, and then uh, I'm going to move it across. So I'm going to move this gradient over to the other side. All right, go in here, right click, add a motion tween, and then what that should do is uh, is go right across. But last step really is make sure that I turn this window layer, uh, these, into a mask so that you only see the shine shine through those particular points. Okay, so once you've got two different masks, uh, two different shines in your car layer underneath, you have got your shine going on. Okay, so if I save this again and then preview it, um, this is what we have. And like I said, you could also do uh, the rims, the headlights um, are also features you can highlight as well. Okay, so uh, go ahead and get started. Choose whatever car you'd like to do um, and make sure that you follow the directions as closely as you can. And as always, have fun.